Welcome to part three of our trip in Iraq. My name is Luke Heater, and this is the beautiful Polly. On this adventure, we'll take you to Kirkuk, the capital of Iraqi culture. Kirkuk has been given that title because of the diverse population of Turkmens, Arabs, and Kurds. Our good friend Mohammed went out of his way to show us around the best spots of Kirkuk and shared stories of the recent wars. Um, people are tired of this. Like, yeah. They want just peace. And you meet a lot of Iraqis in your trip. Like you saw how they are hospital and they are peaceful. They don't want to war anymore. They are tired of this. But first, our adventure begins in Baghdad at the bus station, or the garage as they call it in Iraq. There is little to no English spoken here, so negotiating a ride to a city that's hours away is always an adventure within itself. After a little negotiating and a lot of selfies, we were on the way to Kirkuk once the SUV filled with people. We were off to a quick start until we reached the first checkpoint. There's a checkpoint up here so all the cars are going all over the place, it's crazy. Cars are getting stuck in the dirt. It's mayhem, I love it. All over Iraq, you'll find checkpoints that you'll need to drive through. At these checkpoints, you'll see heavily armed soldiers peering into each vehicle passing by. The soldiers have eyes like an eagle because they were able to spot my American face the majority of the time, no matter how hard I tried to blend in. This was the busiest checkpoint we passed, and luckily, we breezed through like a couple of locals without being spotted. The next few hours flew by, most of the time with sweaty palms as we drove down the wrong side of the highway for some reason. We passed countless bunkers lining the highway and passed kids selling waters at every speed bump. Besides getting stopped at the last two checkpoints going into Kirkuk, it was a flawless ride through the country. Whew. We're stuck at a checkpoint for a long time. We just got to Kirkuk, we're jumping in a taxi. The first checkpoint we were stuck at was like five, five-ish minutes we were stuck. Super friendly, the guy took down my number. At the end, he's like, when I'm in the United States, I'll give you a call, I laughed. And that was it, gave me the passport back. But the second checkpoint, we were there for like, it felt like 30 minutes, probably like 20 minutes. And there was like this cop in the back of a truck with a machine gun sitting in a lazy boy recliner chair. Um, but it was fun, the guy was smiling the whole time, saying shukran, uh, salam alaikum. And everyone was kind. Just make sure you have a few friends that you can call to translate for you because if I didn't have someone to call to translate at that checkpoint, I don't know what would have happened. It would have been a complete mess. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a fun experience. I'll never forget it. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. Once we arrived in downtown Kirkuk, we met up with Mohammed, threw our bags in the hotel, and got to explore in the streets. <laughs> He's helped us out so much. Thank you, thank you. I'll introduce him in a minute. Uh, we're just checking into our amazing hotel. Look at this place. Mohammed dedicates his time to show the positive side of Iraq. He's a volunteer, a researcher, an event speaker, and many, many other things. He's won countless awards due to his activism in the country. And he's even part of the reason why Iraq now offers visa on arrival for multiple countries. We were waiting for something like this. I 
after about five hours on the bus, it's nice to be uh, walking around here, the local markets. All thanks to Muhammad. This feels like New York City. Rubbing elbows with everybody. And uh, Eid is coming up, so everyone's shopping like crazy for Eid. You buy clothing here, glasses, food. It's crazy in here, it's crowded. Speakers yelling. I love it. Switch to the GoPro here, the other camera was too big. I kept hitting people with it. Muhammad said we're maybe the fourth the fourth tourist to walk through here, about something like that. It's crazy. It explains the uh, the looks we're getting. The friendly looks. I read that Kirkuk is called the uh, cultural capital of Iraq because it has like all religions, a little bit of everything all mixed in the city. So I'm excited to uh, check it all out. Going to the local market too is usually the best, the best way to experience the culture. So we're seeing a lot of it. When I was picturing Iraq, this is kind of what I was picturing, like this, this kind of mentality with the fruit stands and stuff. And are the people, they look like Kurdish? Is this like a lot of Kurdish influence around here? Yeah. It's mixed like. It's just all, it's everything? Yeah, all natural. Yeah. Six or seven dollars for a handmade iron. huge iron knife. I'm gonna hang this on the wall. It's so crazy, it's awesome. Shukran Habibi. <laughs> and then next, we're buying a gun. All right, now we're gonna grab some uh, some food. Mohammed, what are we doing here? We're going to eat the head of sheep. <laughs> head of sheep? Is it like sheep brain? Yes. <laughs> this is the local food of Kirkuk. <laughs> we're doing it, we're eating sheep brain. <laughs> when I woke up this morning, I had no idea I'd be eating brain, but... Are you nervous for it? A little bit, but you know, when in Rome, when in Kirkuk, you do as the Kirkukians do. <laughs> yeah, I guess yesterday we had some balls kidneys, heart, and livers, so what's a little brain to go with it? When we walked in, Muhammad pointed at what we'd be eating. It looks like the kind of thing you'd find in the woods in the middle of the night and run away from very, very quickly. But instead, it's what we were calling dinner for the night. It looks scary and uh, we're about to eat that. You force feeding me brains. <laughs> <laughs> First, welcome to Kirkuk. I will uh, welcome you in my city. Uh, now we are trying the Mustola Pacha. It's the oldest restaurant and it's the tradition food in Kirkuk, the main dish. People like traditionally wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning to eat this heavy food and go to work. It keeps it going the whole day. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's very strong and Need time, like, yes. Before the sheep's head is brought out, you start the meal with bone soup. 
soup. It's really, it's super flavorful. It's got a lot of um, garlic and sumac. And it's like sweet and a little bit acidic, but it's delicious. It's like a broth. And it's really nice. And also, when I was first thinking of coming to Iraq, I came across a video from someone named Gus, Gus One on the go. Is that his YouTube? Uh, he was the first videos I watched, and I watched the videos, and I was like, oh, I'm 100% going to Iraq. So thank you, Gus, if you're watching this. Uh, I'm here because of you. But in the video was Muhammad, uh, and he was like the first person I saw. I, was like, I could tell Iraqis were so nice from you in the video. It was a great representation of Iraq. And then, a few weeks later, I was like trying to reach out to people about like who to meet coming here. And I was talking to Muhammad, and I, I, I didn't realize it was you from the video. So once I realized, I was like, holy shit, it's the guy from the video that we're watching. And there's actually a video dedicated about him called uh, Muhammad is a nice guy, yeah. right? Is that what it is? Yeah. Muhammad is a good guy. I'll link it in the video so you should watch that. Uh, so I'm honored to be here with the man, the myth, and the legend, yeah. Muhammad. He's an amazing guy, so thank you. And uh, we're not going to say any more good things about Muhammad anymore. That was the last good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No more compliments. <laughs> and before we knew it, we had a plate of mystery meat in front of us. Don't eat me. <laughs> what do you think about it? I'm speechless. I'm completely speechless. And I'm... I'm gonna be so brave and just open-minded. I've never seen anything like this. Muhammad is trying to kill us. I think the craziest thing I've ever seen, and I can't believe I'm about to eat that. But I'm sure it's gonna be good. I just gotta suck it up and eat it. And what exactly is on this here? Uh, this is the head of the sheep, yeah. this one. And they put special soup. They boil it for around 10 hours. Then they boil it in special soup with the water of the meat, the soup. And they give some uh, special uh, favors and taste for this restaurant because and in Ikea group they do it in different way. In Muslim it's different color. So hair is white, in Muslim it's yellow, in Slimani they do it in red. And when you eat here, like you will think like about how shitty the other city is. <laughs> to be honest. Because sometimes I get fight with another restaurant, I told her this is not Paja. We don't eat it in this way. And this is what is this part here? Ah uh, it's this side. It's the part of the stomach. Uh, they boil it in the water first and then in oil and they put in rice inside it. And what I love is that nothing is wasted on the animal. You eat everything. Every piece. <laughs> every piece. Alright, so I'm going. Is this like a cheek? Meat of the cheek? Uh, no. Uh, I think it's the tongue. The tongue, yeah. Is it the tongue? Yes. Yeah. I'm sure about it, yes. Sheep or sheep? Sheep. Sheep tongue. Yeah. I wish I just thought this was cheap. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had tongue before. Have you tasted before? I don't know, maybe in, like Mexican food, like lengua, that's tongue, right? My first tongue in Iraq. Let's throw it Bajra. Bajra. With Afia. Really good. Really good. I'm psyching myself out. It's actually. It's really enjoyable. I'm shocked. How many from 10? Like, I would eat this again happily, like a 10 out of 10, I would say. <laughs> like, it's really good. Like, I enjoy this just as much as like a falafel or a, as a shawarma or something like that. So I'm gonna snap the intestine. Yeah. Can you eat this, yeah. the whole thing? Yes. Well, Hobbit makes it seem like it's not a big deal, but it's a big deal. <laughs> It looks crazy. Hot. Uh, <laughs> Very hot. But once again, it's really good. It almost has like a sweet, a sweet flavor to it. All right, one more piece. This is still the tongue, right? Yes. From 
one tongue to my tongue. You will talk a lot. We say that in Iran. Yeah. <laughs> Makes you talk a lot more. Uh, some people need the eyes. I think if yeah, there is one. I see one. There is one? I see one eye looking yeah, at you. Yeah, people are eating also. Is it good? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Luke. You eat the whole thing? One. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I need a second. No, I mean, put it to Okay, right. The eye. <laughs> I'm really scared. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just down the hatch. I've never eaten an eyeball before. Your eyes will be really strong. I'm <laughs> yeah. oh, 20 20 vision after this. Oh, my glory. Once again, not bad. <laughs> Shock is not bad at all. It's good. Yeah. I keep expecting the worst. It's, it's really good. It tasted similar to the tongue. The brain. Now the brain's next. Yeah. Wow. You just crack it. Yeah, you can crush it. Yeah. You are Iraqi now. <laughs> Will this make me smarter? <laughs> that will make you not think about political so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take my mind off a lot of things. I'm telling you, Muhammad is trying to kill us. Other YouTubers didn't try this. Did it? The first one. Yeah? Yes. I think if you're going to travel, like, you got to be adventurous. Yes. Like what you eat, you know? Oh, that's cool. No, no you are in Iraq, like... Yeah. With your hand? Yeah. Right. I can't believe I'm just grabbing a brain right now. Tongue, an eyeball, with a little brain to go with it. It tastes good. It tastes really good. But knowing what it is, it's like bushes in your mouth. <laughs> i go for one more. It's like tuna. <laughs> it tastes really good, but the fact that it tastes like tuna scares me a little bit. All right, a little bit more brain down the hatch, baby. It's good. Now it's your turn, Paul. Unless you want some brain. Oh, it's not yet. <laughs> As if it's a Snickers bar. No hesitation at all. <laughs> all right, Muhammad's gonna show me up. I gotta show him up. I'll go for another one. Fast like you like ten. Fighting over the brain now. Oh my God! Salam alaikum. Salam. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to the board. Peace be on you. Okay. You don't so, think about yeah, the like right, right. it. There's something like a sweet and candy. It's sweet. Yeah, it's very easy. Like you can just eat it. Problem of Iraq. Yeah. Yeah. That was the first time I got it on camera, though. Yeah. The electricity going on. Oh, yeah. uh, there is this problem. Be careful. Oh, yeah, more. Yeah, I'm, gonna the yeah, the, uh, I'm gonna dump the brains and tell everyone I, I ate the brains in the dark. Yeah, these did it on purpose. Asha, <laughs> we'll resume when the lights come back on. And last but not least, for the weird food, this is the hoof. Hoof. The foot of the sheep. Yeah. I've had this in Pakistan before in a soup and I really liked it. But something about this one scares me a little more. It's like jelly. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. I'm making a mess as always. Go big or go home, they said. It's all jiggly. Don't try this at home. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't recommend it. <laughs> So good. So good. I really weirdly enjoy this food. I was so scared when I saw this, but I would happily do this again without hesitation. Poof, there it is. What did you say? Don't try this at home. Don't try it. Don't try this at home. Try this in Iraq. Can you say Bismillah? Bismillah. It's just the, te the texture that's so gelatinous. <laughs> the, once you get past that, it's tasty, but the texture is, is texturous. <laughs> We're making some damage in the plate too. We're gonna finish this. Putting the camera down and we're gonna finish all of this. In true Iraqi fashion, we wash down the hooves, brain, intestines, and eyeballs with some chai before calling it a night. That was by far the craziest meal I've ever had in my life. And it's so, it's so crazy to me that it actually tasted good and I enjoyed it. Uh, I really liked it, even the eyeball, everything was so good. Thank you for watching part three of our adventure in Iraq. Stay tuned for part four where we indulge in the best food of Kirkuk and try some more bizarre food that resembles rocks. Why do people eat this? And explore all the beautiful historical sites and as much culture as we possibly could.